Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here today for my regular Monday this and that video. And for those of you who are new, these are weekly vlogs that I do where I talk about all kinds of different things. They're not necessarily instructional videos. I have many of those. Some people get misunderstand the purpose of these videos and they think they're supposed to be instructional. Then they get irritated because I'm not going through all the details. That's because I already have videos out on that or I'll have a video coming out. Usually, as in last week's video where I talked about the dehydrated meats, that I do have instructional videos out on that. So when I talk about those things in my this and that videos, it's to either direct you back to the old videos or to just give you some added tips and the updates to the way that I'm doing things now. So the way I dehydrate my ground meats now is a little different than what I did in the original instructional video I did a couple of years ago because I'm not rinsing all the fat out. So if you want more detailed information you can go back to the old video which I did link to in the description box under last week's video and you can see how I did it and then consider the updates and tips that I mentioned in the video I published last Monday about dehydrated meats and other this and that. So today I'm going to be talking more about dehydrating and what's going on this week. And so I, I tried to do that every so often when we got a lot of stuff coming in and we're dehydrating a lot. Give you an update on that so that's one of the purposes of these videos. As well as updates on the collaborations going on and so much more. Whatever I feel like talking about. So let's start with the dehydrating thing. So what I got going on today and last week I did, I was able to finally start dehydrating my honeysuckle flower. So I've got a bunch more here. I'm still dehydrating the violets, but the, the flowers are done. So I'm just doing the leaves. Got some, lots of leaves coming in. The leaves are beneficial too. I just mix the flowers and leaves all together and use them in the same purpose. And all of these things go into the infused oil for my homemade skin cream, which I do have vi a video on the oil and also a video on the skin cream itself. I'll link to both of those down below. And then up here, I'm just getting started on the red clover. I, I have a few flowers right here <laughs> that I got done and this is the honeysuckle I have done so far once it's dehydrated up it doesn't take up very much room but there's a lot more in there than it looks because yesterday I actually had this tray mostly full of just honeysuckle with a couple of calendula flowers on there so that's what's going on today plus I'm going to be putting in some more chicory leaves and this is uh, for dehydrating for during the winter for my chickens. While this is this kind of stuff is coming in fresh, I just give it to them fresh. Though I have been mixing some of the dehydrated herbs in with their feed too, so they're getting it that way just to make sure they're getting it. But they do love to eat the chicory leaves, the comfrey leaves fresh, and the plantain. I discovered I was so thrilled when I actually noticed they are eating the plantain leaves. In fact, some of the leaves I have right now that are growing in the chicken yard are that big on the plantain. I'm not kidding. And you can see where the chickens have been pecking at them. And I actually did watch the chickens one day and see that they do indeed eat the fresh plantain leaves. And I was so excited. So mostly what I'm looking at is dehydrating a lot of this stuff up, a lot of the excess up so that they can also have it throughout the whole year because it's so very good for them antiviral and so on and so forth and i'm also going to link back while i'm at it i'll link back to the video i did not too long ago about antiviral herbs and more for chicken health so you can add it to their feed you can give it to them fresh however they'll eat it and then other tips that you can do to help keep your chickens healthy and then the other thing i'm dehydrating you can see right behind me on top of my stove here it's fine. We're finally getting enough steady sunshine and long enough days that aren't so terribly dark that we can do a little bit more on our solar power so much later in the year than usual. So I finally pulled out my double hot plate back here, which plugs into our solar power. And I've got some chicken bone broth cooking back here. I'm on day two. I like to cook the bone broth for at least a couple of days. And I always put a splash of homemade wine in there rather than vinegar because to me it it has a better flavor and it does you know those things will help pull the minerals out it's not really that necessary I just don't like the way vinegar tastes in the broth but the homemade wine does actually add a nice flavor while still helping to pull the minerals out of the bones but 
it looks like we're going to have a nice sunny day today. So I've got the solar oven out. And once that sun is hitting the deck fully, I'm going to take this and stick it in the solar oven and then let it finish out the day in there so that I don't have to draw so much from our battery bank today. So with that in mind, I wanted to bring up, I had, re, I had about six months ago, I think it was, well, it was after it was after Thanksgiving. I decided to, instead of just freezing all the bone broth like I normally did, and then have it just keep filling up my freezer because I always forget it's in there. But what I decided to do was take everything out of the freezer plus the broth from the turkey for this past Thanksgiving and dehydrate it all. And I have been so thrilled with it. I'm more apt to use it. I can just open the jar, take a spoonful of the dehydrated broth out and throw it into soup, throw it into gravy, throw it into a casserole, whatever it is I'm making. So I'm using it a lot more. So instead of doing what I normally do with the chicken bone broth, when I roast a chicken and then I use up all the meat through various meals, I usually then will make a bone broth and then take that and turn it immediately into soup. But this time I decided what I'm gonna do is go ahead and dehydrate that up and then put it in a jar and use it that way because I'm really happy with that. So I do have a video on dehydrating bone broth that I'll link to down below. Keep in mind that was my first time doing it. I went ahead and shot the video, but I left all the fat and everything in there. This time what I plan on doing after I let it cook one more day is I'm gonna boil it down and let it condense some more so a lot of the water boils out so there's less to dehydrate when I go to put it on the dehydrator trays. All right, let's get back to those craft collaborations that I forgot to talk about last week. So I, I have closed the date now on the photo collaboration for craft items. So if you've made anything off my video as far as skirts or any crocheted goods, um, I'm going to start working on that video this week. So I won't, I'm not going to be taking any more images for that. And then as far as the quilt, the Rain Country Crazy Quilt Collaboration. So what's going on there is any of my subscribers that sew that want to participate, they've been sending me in some 10 inch squares that are completely quilted front and back with the batting in the middle, just a light batting and it doesn't need to be thick. In fact, I'd prefer it was thinner. And however you want to do it, I just, the main stipulations are 10 inch squares and with unfinished edges. And any style you want, any colors you want, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's gonna be a while before I get enough. I, I'm looking at, it's probably gonna be a few months out, so you still have some time. And, cause right now I think I'm at 14 or 15 squares. And I need, if I'm gonna do a queen size quilt, I'm gonna need 80. But if, this is kind of going along slower than I thought it would, but I'm pretty sure that's because a lot of people are so busy with their gardens and so on and so forth. I get it. So I'm not in that big of a hurry, although I'm excited to get it together. But eventually I will try to put a deadline, but right now I just want to give people time to do what they need to do and try to work on that square when they can. But anyway, I did get two more squares in this last week, so here's the pictures of them. This one here, uh, was from someone in the UK so it's my first international square to come in and I like like the way that she included the flag in there and everything on there you know obviously she quilted the fabric but then she embroidered everything you see on there that was a lot of work and it's very beautiful and then this other square I love the colors of it. In fact, I love every square they've gotten. They're all great, and I appreciate every single one of them. But I am, I do tend to be partial to dark red and dark greens, but I love all colors, and I do want a lot of color in this. So don't. the whole point of this is for you to make it about you, not what you think I like. So something that represents you. That's why I really appreciated the fact that that, that square from the UK had the little flag in there because that's something that represents her. So whatever represents you, I have people that have sent me some with bees on it and, and embroidered their names on it. I love that. If you can get your name on there, if you don't mind, I would love to have your name on there or the name of your homestead or both. So however you want to do it, as long as it's 10 inches and it's all quilted with the backing and everything, then that's the main requirement. And you'll find my address that you'll send that to in the description box down below, but I'll go ahead and say it right here. It's P.O. Box 816, just put Rain Country on there, P.O. Box 816, Forks, Washington, 98331. And of course, that's USA. 
And then the other collabor the next photo collaboration I want to start putting together is going to be the one on fermenting. So, and probably after that I'll do a garden one. So make sure you're taking some nice garden photos during the season, and then we'll get to that probably later. But let's do the fermenting one first. So anything that you have fermented based off of my videos. So what that's gonna be is any fermenting projects that you've done based off my instructional videos, even if it was inspired by. So maybe you did make a fermentation starter, but you used it to ferment something completely different than what maybe I showed in any of my videos. Take some nice quality images of those and send those to me at raincountryhomestead at gmail.com. So that will be the next collaboration. I'm going to give you guys a couple of months to get some photos together to get a, maybe you need to do a project so you can do that and take some photos. So that would include homemade wines and meads, uh, natural homemade sodas, vinegars, um, even bread, if you use the fermentation starter to make bread, take some photos of that. Kimchi, any kind of fermented fruit, vegetable, eggs, anything you've made based off my videos. So that's the next collaboration coming up. And uh, and yeah, be watching for that f the craft photo one to come out soon. It's just a fun way that we I can do something and involve my subscribers in there and we can enjoy each other's hard work that we've put into our gardens and our crafting and our fermenting and so on. And I'll probably have several more. I'm really enjoying doing this. Okay, and then uh, something else I wanted to talk about was my new favorite blend for when I'm grinding up the flour for making my own breads is a 50-50 blend of hard white wheat and barley. I'm really getting into the barley. And so this, these are organic grains. A lot of times people ask me where I'm getting them. Now I'm getting them all from Azure Standard. And thanks to all of the people who order through my affiliate link, which helps to pay for the shipping, because that's the bad thing with Azure Standard is if you don't have a drop point near you, shipping can cost quite a bit. We do have a drop point 60 miles away, but that's just... It's too much time, too much driving, too much trying to work it into the schedule to go pick stuff up, and I hate going into town. I would rather have the stuff delivered. So when people order from Azure Standard through my affiliate link, or it's not an affiliate link, it's actually a referral link. If they order at least $100 or more with their stuff through that link, then I get $25, and what that does is it really helps to cover the cost of the shipping, sometimes a little bit more, so that does a lot. So I can get the stuff delivered right to my door, save myself some time and the money in shipping. So anyway, I've been able to do that thanks to my followers. So that you'll find that link in the description box down below. But Azure Standard is a great company. They have lots of, most of the stuff they carry is organic and non-GMO. And so that is now where I'm getting all my grains. I get popcorn there. I get rye. I get so many things there. I know I'm, I'm going to forget them all. So I'm not going to try to name it, name them all off. But Anyway, that's uh, the, that's the blend I'm finding I like best. I did try going 100% barley and found that the texture of the bread didn't turn out near as good as when I did a 50/50 blend. And that's just uh, that's just my personal choice. So that I wanted to bring that up because uh, if you're like liking to try different kinds of grains like I am. Keep experimenting. I personally don't like hard red wheat. I prefer the white because it has a much lighter, sweeter flavor than red, red wheat. It has a lighter color, so it blends well with everything. The flavor is so mild. And then the barley just adds a lot more health benefits as well because barley barley is just great. You know, uh, For those of you who are diabetic, barley is a good choice for a grain for you, by the way consider blending some other stuff. I've tried soft white wheat. I like that as well. And spelt is another good one that I do sometimes like to use and blend in there. So anyway, I'm going to be making some bread today and that's what I'm using right there. And I do still like to mix some organic white flour in though when I'm doing a yeast bread just to keep it light and fluffy with a little splash of vinegar when I'm mixing it up because that also helps with the rise and keeps it fluffier. And then another thing I wanted to bring up, if you saw the video that published on Friday about uh, herbs and more for weight loss, 
I mentioned my jet fuel latte. Well, I'm just now getting back into it again. I had got back into drinking coffee, which I don't think is bad. Coffee has its benefits, but I decided it's time for me to cut back for a while. And so I'm getting back into my jet fuel latte. But the last blend that I made, I just, I don't know, I did it differently and I don't like the flavor. I do not like the flavor of ashwagandha anyway. And so I always try to cover it up with a bunch of stuff. And I'll link to my video, the last one, it's a few years old, that I did on my blend in the description box down below. But anyway, so I had a couple options. I could dump all this out into a bowl. I had two jars of it made up actually, this jar and then another full jar and then mix some more cacao powder in and some other things to help boost the flavor. But instead of doing that, I remembered I still have this organic instant cocoa that I bought for my son when he was still living here. And it's really good actually. And you can get this on Vitacost. Vitacost has a pretty good price on stuff like this. I love Vitacost. So what I did was actually, instead of having to re-blend everything, is I'll take a spoonful of that and add that to my hot water and then a small spoonful of this. So a big spoonful of this and then a like a tablespoon and then a teaspoon of this just to help give it a better flavor and that really did help. So I actually enjoyed it this morning and that's easier than me dumping it all, all the dumping both the jars out and re-blending everything. So I'm just gonna do that until I work through those jars. And then when I do my, my next blend, I'll follow my old recipe a little closer. I must not have been paying attention to my measurements or something, but way too much ashwagandha. Ugh. The flavor is just, I personally just do not like it. But it's very healthy for you. It's really good for your thyroid. It's very good for you if you're going through menopause. It's helpful for weight loss, so on and so forth. And then a question, this is the other purpose of my this and that videos is when I get questions that come in through the week, I try to remember to answer them in these. It's one I've been getting a lot and people asking me, well, can I use my food saver or my seal and meal and you know, dehydrate the meats, this, that, and the other thing, and then just vacuum seal them up in bags? Well, you can, but I don't recommend it. And here's why. With a lot of your things, like some of your meats, uh, some of your vegetables, when they dehydrate, even your, your fruits are probably pretty safe. They can end up having kind of sharp edges on it. I learned this one years ago. And when you go to vacuum seal, the vacuum will pull that bag down tight, as you should know, against these dried herbs and if they've got any kind of sharp edges on them it's going to poke holes in your bag and you you just wasted your bag and it's just not worth it and on top of that uh one of the reasons i got i'm just done with food saver and their bags is that i'm just trying to get away from storing my foods in plastic and you know the longer that stuff sits in storage the more it's going to take on the flavor of the plastic and what that tells you, it doesn't matter if it's BPA free, it's still plastic, it still has toxins in it, is that's not only ruining the flavor of your stuff, it's also getting, that means it's getting into the food. Those plastics are actually getting into your foods. But using glass is gonna work a lot better. You're not gonna get the plastic flavor in your food or the plastic toxins into your food. And you can keep reusing those, those glass jars over and over again. And then one more thing I wanna say before I close up this video is that I wanna remind everyone that I have, I'm not on MeWe anymore because I ended up going back to my old Facebook account so I could do events and stuff with family, get things set up there because it was so much easier to keep in contact and then see all the pictures of my grandbabies. And as such, uh, it's actually easier for me to go back to my Facebook page for Rain Country Homestead. So I'm starting to post back there again. And I have a broader reach there than I do with MeWe. So, um, you can follow me on MeWe, but I'm not posting on there. I'm sorry, everyone. I keep changing back and forth. It's a matter of me finding what works best for me in my time schedule. And since I'm already on Facebook with, you know, check it on my family, then I can just go over my Facebook page and post there. And again, I just have a much broader reach. And so I can give you some updates there. I do also do some updates here on YouTube. Some stuff's actually easier to do on Facebook though than it is on YouTube. So it just depends on what it is. So anyway, if you're on Facebook and you'd like that link, I'll make sure it's in the description box down below so you can follow us there. I do have an Instagram and a Twitter, but I'm never on those. Uh, you can follow me, but you'll probably never see any new posts from me. Maybe, who knows? Things keep changing. Maybe one of these days I'll just put a random post out there. Just don't expect to see much. And certainly 
don't private message me at any of those sites. The best place to contact me if you want an answer, you want me to actually see it, is through email at the Rain Country Homestead at gmail.com address. Okay, well I hope you enjoyed my this and that for the week and I do, I will be getting a garden tour video out. It should be out in, in a couple of days, publishing on Wednesday. So I'm planning on doing the front yard garden and maybe a little more depending on how long that video ends up being. All right, well thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.